This is going to be chapter 10.1, Curves Defined by Parametric Equations. So we're going to take a look at different types of equations that we couldn't quite um, formulate as y equals f of x uh, before. So um, typically these curves uh, are used a lot in Calc 3. So you'll, especially if you're gonna take Calc, Calc 3 uh, either next semester or eventually, um, parametric equations come up a lot in in that class. So um, this particular topic is going to be very useful for you, uh, especially when you go into that class. So um, the first thing to kind of note um, about parametric equations is basically, uh, let's consider maybe a particle. Oops. So a particle moving along a curve. Okay, so let's consider this particle. This particle can probably be like, I don't know, it can be many different things. Um, and you have this little thing. It can be maybe like an electron or something, and it's traveling along a curve. Okay, it can be a charge. It can be many different things. So maybe it's traveling like this. Okay, so something that looks like that along this curve C. Um, and the way to kind of describe its motion, uh, we can draw little arrows to kind of uh, denote where exactly the orientation is going. Okay, so it's kind of going this way. Uh, so you have this particle, it's moving in, in this direction. Um, and you can see that uh, we cannot express this particular function as y equals f of x. So um, a couple notes here is that it's very difficult to describe c by y equals f of x. Not impossible, okay? Um, so you can't quite do it. Um, one of the reasons why is that um, it fails the vertical line test. So if you remember the vertical line test tells you whether a function is a function, and you can see that the vertical line is going to fail here. Um, but um, one thing that we can do is that we can kind of express our x and y, because if this is your x and here's your y, you can express it with another variable. So x and y can be expressed by another variable. And basically, uh, this variable, we're going to call it t. Okay, um, so if we were kind of looking at this particular particle that's going through this curve, along this curve, then maybe t can be time in this case. So here t, we're going to give it a, a name. So t, we're going to call it a parameter. Okay, so we're going to call t a parameter. Um, so, and then we can express our x as a function of t and our y as a function of t. So you can kind of think about like um, the vertical distance and the horizontal distance. How can we express the vertical distance in terms of y and how can we um, uh, uh, look at the horizontal distance in terms of t, um, in terms of x. So this is a way that we can do this. Um, these two things is what we call parametric equations. Okay, and many different ways that you've seen, especially in physics, uh, you probably have seen something that kind of looks like this. If you just have uh, this, a ball that you throw, kind of follows this, par this parabolic shape. Notice that you can figure out the distance in the x direction. So in the x direction, maybe this is xi. In the y direction, you can also find the the distance in the y direction. And at each particular point, you actually have a time. So maybe this is at time equals one half. This time equals, I don't know, 75. This is time equals one. So maybe you're looking at the different seconds of this ball. So you can see that you have an x direction, a y direction, but each of these times along this curve, you can kind of try to model the time as well. This is basically what we're doing with this parametric equation. You have x, you have y, and we're trying to model uh, or put in t and try to express x in terms of t and y in terms of t, okay? So let's do an example and kind of to show 
um, the way that this curves, uh, parametric curves can look like. So here's an example. So sketch and identify the curve defined by the parametric equations. Okay, so um, here is going to be two equations, x is equal to t squared minus 2t, and then y is equal to t plus 1. So we want to sketch and identify the curve defined by these parametric equations. Okay, so um, one really um, tedious way to do it, but I think it's probably a really good way because there's other ways that you can try to figure out what this curve is but uh, the way that you kind of want to do that is you want to start off with a table so basically uh, notice here uh, I'm gonna notice that X is in terms of T Y is in terms of T so why don't we plug in values for T to figure out what X and Y is so here is T so I'm going to plug in random values for t, I'm going to find an x value, and I'm going to find a y value, okay? And I'm just they're just going to be random, so let's start off with negative numbers. So let's say we want to plug in negative 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 in here. So negative 2 squared is going to give me 2, minus 2 times negative 2 is going to give me a, also a, a, so negative 2 squared gives me a 4, minus 2 times negative 2 is going to give me a positive 4, that gives me an 8. Okay, then I'm going to plug in negative 2 in here, and I'm going to get a negative 1. So then let's keep doing it. So we can put in negative 1, plug in negative 1 into the x, I'm going to get a 3 out. Plug in a negative 1, you can see that you're going to get a 0. If I plug in 0 in here, x is just going to be 0, y is just going to be equal to 1. If I plug in 1, so you can kind of see the pattern. I'm going to get 1 squared minus 2 times 1. That gives me negative 1. Plug in 1 in there, you're going to get a 2. And then I can keep going. So let me just plug in. Whoops. Let me plug in two more points. So maybe 2 and 3. Plug in 2 in there. What is this going to give me? 4 minus 4. That gives me 0. Plug it there, you get the 3. And then here you're going to get a 3 and a 4. Okay. So you can do many different points if you want. Um, here t was not restricted so um we just we can just we just kind of want to get a general shape of what this looks like so um let me go ahead and graph this because we want to sketch this curve so let me maybe do this okay so let's start off with our first point so you can see that all of these guys are just points in space in this x and y 2d space so at, you get 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Y is negative 1. So we're going to put a point there. This corresponds with T equals negative 2 because that's what we got. At T equals negative 2, this is the position where this particle is. Um, then we have 3, comma 0. So if I do 1, 2, 3, comma 0, okay, this is going to be at T equals negative 1. Then at t equals 0, you get 1, 0, comma 1, so you got 0, comma 1. So you're going to have this point, and this is at t equals 0. At time equals 1, you get negative 1, show right over here, and then 2. Okay, so we have that. This is at t equals um, 1. Time equals 2, you get 0, comma 3, so we got 0, comma 3. So this is t equals uh, 2. And then at time equals 3, you got 3, comma 4. There's 3 and 4. This t equals um, 3. Okay. And all you can just do is just kind of trace this out. So you can kind of trace this entire curve. So you kind of see some this kind of parabolic, sideways parabolic shape. And you always want to go in the direction in which t is increasing. So you can see that t is increasing uh, this way. So this is a direction that the particle is moving. So drawing little arrows represents where the particle is going. Okay. Obviously, this is going to keep going. So I don't know. 
indefinitely, but that's basically what the whole point of this is. So when you're asked to sketch and identify the curve, you can kind of just see, you first want to plug in some random numbers for t, uh, find the values of x and y, follow its, its, uh, its path, um, and then you can kind of see that this looks like a sideways parabola. Okay, so it's a little tedious, but that's basically what it is. Um, so something to note about uh, this type of problem is that uh, we can restrict the parameter. So I could have easily said um, x is equal to t squared minus 2t y equals t plus 1, and I could have said, oh, I just want from 0 to 3, t to just be from 0 to 3. So in that case, what you would do is that if you can see t equals 0 all the way to 3, well, at t equals 0, you have this point. t equals 3 was over here. So basically, you just want this shape, okay? Starting at t equals 0 to t equals 3, okay? So... If there's restrictions on t, make sure that you follow the restrictions. You don't want to go beyond this. This particular, whatever this is, can be modeled just from 0 to 3. Now, t doesn't necessarily have to be time. You know, obviously, you can't have negative time. Uh, it can be many different things. But in this case, for the most part, you can kind of think about it at the time if you want to see some application. Um, so, um, so graphing it is pretty basic. Uh, one thing that I think you need to kind of know is kind of, um, or ask ourselves, can we express the curve C in just X and Y? Okay. So basically what it's saying is to eliminate the parameter. Okay, so can we possibly eliminate the parameter? So get rid of t. So that's what it's saying, get rid of t. <clears throat> so basically, if we have these equations, we want to get rid of t. Is it, so sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. So um, let's go ahead and try. So one way to do it, um, if you have this, and we want to eliminate the parameter, uh, basically, what you want to find is you want to solve for t. So one of the first steps is solve for t. Plug into the other equation. And then finally, make sure you do not have any t's in your final equation. So sometimes this can be really easy to do. Sometimes it's really difficult to do. So um, if you're given the equation, so this is the problem that we had before, and you want to solve for t, well, notice this one might be a little hard to solve for, but this one might be a little easy. So let's solve for t minus 1 to both sides. So t equals y minus 1. Let's plug it in there. So you're going to get x is equal to uh, y minus 1 squared minus 2y minus 1. So just plugging in the t into the, uh, the y minus 1 into the t. Um, so then if you simplify this and FOIL this out, you're going to get x equals y squared minus 4y plus 3. Okay. And if you remember from pre-calculus, uh, this is just an equation of a sideways parabola. So basically, usually we have problems that look like this. Okay, where maybe this parabola maybe looks like this. Oops, that should be x. Um, however, this one, when you have x equals something with y, you kind of have this sideways parabola. Okay, and actually there will be a section in conics that we will revisit this in case you forgot all this. Okay, so there, this one here, you can see that we've eliminated the parameter. We got rid of t, and we only expressed it as x and y. And if we were to graph it, we will get this exact shape. The only thing that you don't get from this shape is you don't know the orientation. So the orientation, or the way in which it's going, is uncertain. So you're not quite sure what it is. Okay. So um, let's do another problem. Let me go over here. 
so let's um, sketch the parametric curve for the following set of parameters. Oops, <laughs> so learn set of parametric equations. Okay, and then indicate the direction of motion. Okay, and then finally eliminate the parameter. to find an equation with x and y. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Um, so here, uh, what we want is x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t. Okay, and here we're gonna place a restriction on t which is between zero and two pi, okay? So if you wanna take a moment to kind of maybe uh, try this problem out, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. Um, so the first thing that you kinda of wanna do is let's go ahead and figure out some values of t uh, to find out what my values of y and x and y should be. So um, the first thing to do, let's plug in zero since that's our end point. So let's plug in zero. So cosine of zero is just one, cosine of zero is zero, okay? Then the next nice number to plug in is maybe pi over two, okay? So whenever this, when t is pi over, pi over two, you're gonna get zero and one. The next nice number would be pi. So then this would be negative one and zero. And then I can keep going using basically the quadrantal angles. This would just be zero and negative one, and this would just go back to zero, one, okay? So what kind of shape is this? Well, here is my x, here is my y. At t equals 0, you have this point, 1 comma 0, so you have 1 and then 0. So this is when t is equal to 0. At time at t equals pi over 2, you're going to get 0 comma 1. So 0 comma 1 is right here. This is going to be t equals pi over 2. Then at, at pi, you're going to get negative 1, 0. That's right over here. So this is t equals pi. Then you have zero comma negative one. That's gonna be at t equals three pi over two. And finally you have one comma zero, which is back here. So if you look at this, well, what is this gonna be? Well, it's obviously not a straight line because you can see that the sine and the cosine curves kind of curve. So you're basically having this curved shape, which we all know what this is. Whoops. <laughs> If I can draw it correctly. Um, okay, whatever. I don't care anymore. All right, so which basically this is just a circle. So what we end up getting is just a circle. And this circle is of radius 1. Okay, and you know that an equation of a circle with radius 1 is just x squared plus y squared equals 1. So this is actually the equation of this particular um parametric equations, you can see that t is increasing this way. Okay, so you kind of see this um, counterclockwise direction. Now, not all of them are going to be counterclockwise. Sometimes they're going to be clockwise. So it really just depends. Um, so this is the direction of motion. We have, uh, we graphed our parametric equations. Now let's eliminate the parameter to find x and y. So there's two ways that you can do this. Okay, so here's the first way to kind of eliminate this parameter. The first way is using an identity, okay? So basically, uh, you have, uh, you know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. This is what we know. Now in this case, we have t. So if we change theta to t, well that still gives us the same identity, okay? Now we know what cosine of t is. Cosine is just x. And then we have a squared. Sine is just our y, that's just squared equals one. So 
using a trig identity can be very, very, can simplify a lot of really good, uh, a lot of algebra. Now, what about if you want to see the algebra? Okay. Well, the second way to do it is just using the algebraic method. Okay. And a way that you can do that is just you have x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t. So one thing that you can do is solve for t, okay? So t is going to be equal to the cosine inverse of x, okay? Now we're going to plug it into the other guy. So we have y is equal to sine of cosine inverse of t, okay? Now we're going to do something that we used to do a lot in trig. I don't know if you remember it, but basically we're going to say that this is going to be theta. So I'm substituting theta for cosine inverse of t. So then what we have is y equals sine of theta, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this theta equals cosine inverse of t, and we're going to re rewrite it as the following. So t is equal to cosine of theta, okay? Oh, wait, this should be x's. There shouldn't be t's in there. This should also be an x, okay? And this should also be an x. All right, and now what we want to do, uh, notice that this is just going to be a right triangle, okay? So there's going to be a right triangle. Here's theta. And basically, we know that the cosine is just the, uh, uh, op, uh, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is just x over 1. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out that this is going to be square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay? So now what we want to do is we want to look at y equals sine of theta. So we know that y was equal to sine of cosine inverse of x. We let this equal to theta, so we are looking basically for sine theta. Well, sine theta based on this triangle is just going to be the uh, opposite over the adjacent, which is just going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. So if I bring these two guys together, you're going to get y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which can go away. If I square both sides, you get y squared equals 1 minus x squared. I add x squared, you're going to get x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay, so you see that you get exactly the same thing with a little bit more work, but it's still um, it's still useful. Okay, so this is some of the basics of parametric equations. So there really wasn't any calculus here. I just wanted to explain a little bit of what parametric equations are, um, and uh, we'll do a couple of calculus stuff um, in the next video.